Elliott magnets are cool. They're fun to play with. I'm also hoping today to realize, to teach you to realize that you've thought about the earth completely wrong about something pretty fundamental. So you ready? Here we go. Magnets are dipolar. They have two poles. What are they called? North and south. Sydney, you figure out where we are? Good. Uh, here's a bar magnet from the top view. Completely arbitrary, arbitrarily, I'll label that north and that south. Much like in electricity where we had like charges repel and unlike charges attract, like poles repel and unlike poles attract. However, unlike electric charges, you cannot completely isolate a north pole or a south pole. We could completely isolate a negative charge. It's an electron. We could completely isolate a positive charge. It's a proton. In fact, we had an elementary charge, 1.6 plus or minus 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. We cannot do that with magnets. If I broke this bar magnet in half, I would not end up with a north magnet and a south magnet. As soon as I snapped it in half, this would be a south pole that would be a North Pole, and I would have two small, complete magnets. As I showed you already, I was able to make a magnet move without touching it. That suggests that magnets send out field lines, magnetic field lines. Well, if we're sending out a field, because fields are vectors, what's the direction? For electric field, it was which way would a positive want to move if it could. The direction of magnetic field lines is a little easier. Magnetic field lines always point from north to south. Or, in terms of a magnetic compass, the direction a compass needle points. A compass points south. Wait a minute, Mr. Duick. I've held a compass in my hand. I thought it pointed north. Compass points south. Mr. Duick, I, I, I don't want to argue the point, but I've been in Boy Scouts. I've been in Brownies. I've done some hiking. I'm getting my pilot's license. I, I'm telling you, Mr. Duick, a compass points north. No, it doesn't. Mr. Okay, hold that. We'll come back to it. We need a symbol for magnetic field. We can't use the letter M. What's M already taken by? Lowercase m is mass, uppercase mass is some, uh, uppercase m is something else. Uh, we use a letter from Latin, capital letter B. That's the symbol for magnetic field. In fact, you'll often hear me talk about a B field instead of saying the word magnetic because I even tend to abbreviate when speaking. Without looking at their formula sheet for a candy, without looking at their formula sheet, Elliot, for a candy. Can anybody tell me the units for magnetic field? Oh, electric field had two units, uh, newtons per coulomb, volts per meter. Gravitational field had two units, uh, meters per second squared and newtons per kilogram. There are two units for a magnetic field. Can you give me one? So they are measured in Gauss, G-A-U-S-S, -S, after a mathematician whose last name was Gauss. But the one that we'll be using is... Tesla's. Yes, that person has a unit named after him. Kids always are happy. Uh, abbreviation, capital T. And since I'm introducing a new concept to you, I always like to try and give you an idea of what's really big and what's really small. So the Earth's magnetic field is around 10 to the negative 6 Tesla's. That's enough to make a compass point south. I still think it's north, Mr. Duke. Patience. 
A uh, very large magnetic field would be, say, uh, four Teslas. In fact, 40 Teslas, 10 times stronger than that, I suspect long-term exposure would have bad effects on you because I suspect it would start to affect the iron and the hemoglobin in your blood and probably change how your blood circulates, which couldn't be good, I don't think. Uh, MRI machine typically has three, four, or five Teslas. Anybody here been on an MRI machine before? No one in this class. In my other classes, like five or six. Uh, Caleb had been in there like a dozen times with his knee injury or whatever. Okay. Uh, what does the M stand for in MRI? Magnetic. What does the R stand for? Resonance. What does the I stand for? Imaging or imager. Magnetic resonance imager. There used to be an N in front, which stood for nuclear. People wouldn't go into a tube that said nuclear. So we just dropped the N, even though, trust me, there's still some nuclear stuff going on. But magnets, oh, those are on my fridge. I'll go into a tube that's magnets. It's humans. There are two, oh, there we go. There are two main types of magnets. Permanent magnets, like these ones here. Uh, these are made out of rare earth metals, typically. Rare earth metals is a group of metals, uh, primarily neodymium and some other ones. Uh, right now, currently, we get most of these from countries like the Congo in Africa, um, and we do a poor job. The fact that we need these in most of our electronic devices also has meant that we have done a, an exploitive job of poor countries mining their resources and taking their resources really without fair compensation. Uh, just about three months ago, Japan announced that they had found in an island off their coast a massive underground store of rare earth metals. In fact, rough guesses right now suggest that it'll be enough to last the next 350 or so years. I'm hoping that that makes the poor country of Congo a little more politically stable, because right now there's a lot of money at stake, which is why there's so much turmoil in that country, sadly. Other reasons as well, but one of the reasons why. So those are permanent magnets. How many of you have ever been in a restaurant and noticed your cutlery was magnetic? Okay. White spot cutlery is pretty good for that. Their alloy seems to be pretty good. Uh, one way to generate a permanent magnet is to take a ferromagnetic material and strike it with a sharp blow. Very hard. Whack. And what that will do, and I'm simplifying the explanation. This isn't quite right because it's a quantum thing like everything is. But it will. you can imagine that every electron is kind of a little mini magnet of its own. If you, sharp, if you strike it with a sharp blow, it can cause a lot of the magnetic domains to all jiggle loose and then they'll realign all lined up with each other and you'll get a temporarily magnetized piece of metal. So if you see cutlery that's magnetic, it was dropped probably, is, I'm guessing is the most likely explanation. But you can actually try at your table without damaging your table, just strike the cutlery on the table really hard, and you can magnetize it. And those are cool. Permanent magnets are fun to play with, but far more useful are magnets caused by electricity. Max, this gives us a magnet that we can turn on and off at will. And if you were an engineer, a shiver would run down your spine as you realized what that opens up. Again, that gives me the ability to turn a force off and on at will. That's an electric switch. I can turn something on and off at will. I can do an awful lot with that. And so we'll spend a lot of time looking at electromagnets. They're really useful. What do the magnetic field lines look like around a single magnet? Put your pencils down and look up. Here's a sketch of magnetic field lines. Now, in real life, they would be three-dimensional, so there would be coming some coming towards us out of the page. We're just drawing a flat version. But key ideas, you can see the magnetic field lines point from what to what? North to south. 
which is also the direction that a compass would point. In other words, if I put a compass right there, it would point that way. Or if I put a compass right there, it would point that way. Or if I put a compass right there, uh, calculus students, it would point tangent to the field line. And yes, there's a way to do this with calculus and stuff too. Um, it would point that way because a compass points south. Mr. Do south. Uh, also, a little note, magnetic field lines have no beginning and no ending. What that means also, and don't write this down because this is sort of wrong and sort of right, you can sort of imagine that inside the metal, the magnetic field keeps going to the left and comes out the other side. They, I can't call them loops because they're not circular, but they have no beginning and no ending. The Earth is also a magnet. That's how a compass works. So a compass works. It's a needle that has a north pole on the end of it, a north magnetic pole. What does that mean? It means the magnet inside the Earth, folks, looks like this. It's not north up there. We call it north. We even talk about magnetic north up there. It's not a north pole up there. It's a south pole up there. It's the only reason the compass points that way in the first place. So it's the opposite of what you might have thought inside the Earth if you ever gave it thought and wondered how a compass works. You might have thought to yourself, oh, the compass points north because up at the top of the Earth, there's a big north pole and at the bottom of the Earth. And of course, top and bottom, Darcy, are completely arbitrary, but that's just how most maps are drawn. No, there's a south pole up, up in the Arctic and a north pole down in the Antarctic, magnetically. But it really gets confusing, Max, because we talk about geographical north. That's the North Pole. And then if you do take a navigation course for sailing or for piloting or something like that, they will talk about magnetic north near the North Pole. And what they mean is that's which way a compass points. Except, and I don't get into this with them, compass points magnetic south. But we'll call it magnetic north so that we can have a North Pole, a geographic north, and a magnetic north to reduce the confusion. But it's wrong. But to reduce the confusion. But it's wrong. You can draw magnetic field lines, or given a magnetic field line diagram, you can recognize whether it's north and south. So magnetic field lines go from north to south as an example. And what you're kind of imagining, if it, an imaginary particle that's made of north only. It doesn't exist because we can't isolate a north pole. But the magnetic field lines also show you which way a little imaginary north would travel. So if a north left right here, it would get repelled by the other north and get pushed that way and get sucked back in there, kind of like that. Maybe kind of like that. Sydney, if it left here and got really far, it would get repelled. It might vanish and it might slowly come back on, it might go off our page and re-enter the page like that. You can imagine that loop continuing off the page. Uh, from the other side as well, very similar. We would have stuff go zoom, zoom. Sound effects are optional. Zoom. And this would also be perfectly symmetrical on the bottom of the page, assuming these magnets are symmetrical. Is that okay, Sarah? I will almost certainly give you a picture, but like this. And just ask you to tell me, hey, which is north, which is south? Or some variation that might be a north and a south facing each other. You would see that the lines were attracted to each other. Uh, it might be a south and a south facing each other. You'd say that they were, still see that they were repelling each other, but you'd also notice, oh, the lines are going in the opposite direction from north to south. We're going to practice, we're going to have to be drawing a lot of these. Turn the page. Really, this is the next most important thing you need to remember.
Michael, we finally reached the limit of what we can do two-dimensionally on a flat piece of paper. You're going to find that we're going to have to model things three-dimensionally. We have to draw three-dimensional pictures. In particular, we're going to want to show the difference between look up something going down the page, something going up the page, something coming out of the page right at your face, and something going into the page right away from you. How do we draw that? We have, in physics, come up with some symbols of convention. To show that something is going into the page away from us, we draw an X with a circle around it, and that's meant to represent the tail feathers of an arrow retreating away from us, and we're looking along the arrow, and all we can see are the tail feathers. To show that something is coming out of the page towards us, uh, that's meant to show the tippy tip of an arrow coming out of the page and hitting us right between the eyes. That's what we use if you're a publisher that pays somebody to do fancy schmancy graphics. When Mr. Duick is typing these up, he finds it very difficult to do the circles but doing a capital X is really easy. I can type that. Or putting a period for the dot is really easy. I can do that. So you're going to sometimes see in diagrams, you'll just see the X or the dot without the circles. But I'll bring the circles back because that's where they came from this notion of looking along an arrow. But what I mean, for example, if I just scroll ahead, uh, like this wire here, which way is the current going in that wire? Into the page away from me. Which way is the current going in this wire into the page away from me? Which way is the current going in this wire out of the page towards me? But then you're going to see oh, this diagram here. We just use X's. Just look up, Sarah. Don't try and follow this fast. This here, I've stopped drawing the circles, but what direction is that magnetic field right there into the page? Later on, when you start bombing your way through the homework, for example, what direction is this magnetic field right here? See the X's? That's meant to show that that region is into the page. No, oh, lost my handout. These X's, that region is into the page. That region is, so the circles don't always appear. Um, and I think I even have one here just with dots coming up, if I recall. I think I do, Mr. Duick. Come on. Yeah, uh, right here, those dots above and below are meant to show something coming out of the page at us. So usually the circles will appear. Not always. What's the units for magnetic field? Folks, what's the units for magnetic field? Tesla. Teslas. Uh, what's the symbol for magnetic field? Capital B. Which way do magnetic field lines point? From what to what? From north to south. Because you can't isolate a pole, there will always be a north and a south, unlike the electric field one where I had to phrase it carefully because it was possible to have a negative by itself or a positive by itself. That's why I did that convoluted. Which way would a positive want to move it? Because I couldn't guarantee that both were on the page. Uh, we can't isolate a pole, so from north to south. 